These are five moves that defenders hate you. So the first move is this off arm swipe. So you'll see a lot of guys use this, Kyrie, Trey Young especially. There's a couple things we want to pay attention to though that we don't want to get called for offensive falls, right? As a general rule of thumb, you have the right to maintain your space, right? So if he gets in here and, and he starts pushing into me, I have the right to like not let him do that, right? And also one other thing that applies with this is when we run, our arms are gonna do this, right? So if we can kind of bring those two ideas together, we have the right to kind of do that. Now, where I can run into problems is if I get like, like really swimming with that arm. So a rule of thumb for this and a lot of the other ones we're gonna go over is that I wanna make sure I keep this elbow bent sort of here and it's gotta be subtle. Now what that does for me is boom, it turns him that way so number one, his back is to me harder to play defense that way. And two, it also pulls his momentum that way as I'm coming this way. And three, it's protection, right? If he's trying to steal the ball with that hand, no, we're not doing that. If he's trying to use that hand, try to hold me up from going, again, that little swim move tactic or the swipe gets that arm disengaged, gets it down, get out of my space. And now if he's trying to do anything to hold me, it's all kind of with that wrist. Like you're not gonna hold me much with that wrist. The next one is using our off arm in a different way. We're using it to hezzy. Now getting that off hand by the basketball makes him think I'm gonna pick up the basketball. Gotta be careful with not having the hand come more than halfway under. That's gonna get called for a carry. Other thing I wanna pay attention to is eyes to the rim. And if I could do that before I get into this, so a lot of players, they think about here and then all at the same time. What I found is if you watch Kyrie, all the guys that use this best they get their eyes on the rim before there's even into this freeze motion in the hand by the basketball to give him time to really think okay he's locking on the rim early gives me a longer bigger sell of that fake so now when he jumps out i can go past one other little hack i've noticed a lot of people say this only applies to really good shooters like steph curry but i've seen just like so so shooters do this they don't always get their feet exactly squared like they do in their jump shot even kobe he would give a pump fake like this from time to time where he's probably not going to shoot from there right but the defender doesn't have a lot of time when the game is fast they might think i'm going to be stepping back and then doing this right they might think i'm here yeah my feet aren't squared but i'm about to get him squared since the game happens fast he has to start thinking about jumping early and i can get away with not having my feet set as much if i set it up early with my eyes and that hand to get him thinking way before the fake that I'm gonna shoot. This next move you gotta be careful with, but it's where a lot of these, what I would call fake ankle breakers happen. And it's the Michael Jordan move on Byron Russell. You'll see a lot of street ball guys do this. I'm not gonna name any names, but you know who they are. They'll come up to, to the defense and get some momentum going and they just give them that push with that off arm before they get into this snatch back crossover. A couple of things we wanna pay attention to. Again, keeping the elbow tight helps. It doesn't make it as apparent. Number two, if I start getting the arm extended and really like holding it out there for a long time, higher chance is gonna get called, but that's pretty much it right there. We get a moving, we get tight, right on the hip with the hand, make a small nudge. If you wanna make sure it's more legal, completely legal, don't even move the arm, keep it pinned here and you're using your body and your hips momentum. That's moving him, my hips not the arm. This next one is the hook. There's two ways we can do it. So in old school vet movies, like if they were posting someone, they would do this. So you can do this move both driving though and in the post. And to make it legal is to not do what I did there. So you don't want to do it that way because you can get called. However, you can maybe get away with using this elbow to hook. See how I can use that to kind of push him back. Again, we're talking about that 90 degree arm angle. I could even maybe get the arm involved a little with the hand more, but I wanna keep this nice and tight. And then the variation for that would be using the foot to hook. You're never gonna get whistled for that. You can especially do that in a post, like a good post move is gonna be doing that. So I really get him out of position, I can stay in front of him. Well, you'll see a lot of ball handlers like Chris Paul, they'll get here. John Moran, Kyrie Irving, Steph Curry, and it'll keep him in jail. And then the final one is if he's really getting into my space here, or even if he's not in my space and I kind of close the gap, gap slowly, that's the key. I want to get in here slow first. And I got my arm here. Again, I have the right to hold this space for protection. Now, I don't have the right to just push right into the middle of his chest, right? However, I can probably get away with a little, like a couple inch push into his chest, or if I'm making that angle more here to the side, sort of a veering angle, so I'm not going directly into his chest, it's more here. I can probably get away with that. Again, some people will call this cheating. Some people just say it's protecting and keeping your space, however you wanna look at it. But the way, the way I think to make sure you're being safe with it and not getting the call is that there's this slow contact force or if the defense, especially if he's the one coming into me making the contact, I can kind of get in here a little and now I can use that to create separation. And as you can see from this, there's maybe a space for a shot or possibly 
I can drive here and create this path. But here's the thing, if you really wanna master getting past defenders, make sure you check out this video right here. We go in detail on how to read defender speed and a whole bunch more.